Hello and welcome to our Gaspar's Foxtrot uh, Zoom chat. Uh, we were hoping to be presenting the world premiere of Gaspar's Foxtrot at the Three Choirs Festival, um, but the world has changed, as we all know. So we're going to give you a preview of what we'll be presenting at the Three Choirs Festival next year. So for those of you who don't know, Gaspar is uh, based on a real fox that started visiting me Gaspar. at home in London. Salut. In Gaspar's Foxtrot, Gaspar boards the number 38 bus and gets a fox eye view through the centre of London past some extraordinary sights and sounds like St George's Church in Bloomsbury with a lion and a unicorn chasing each other up the very distinctive pyramid spire. The amazing umbrella shop with umbrellas and sticks of all shapes, sizes and colours. Denmark Street or Tin Pan Alley filled with noisy music shops and Chinatown a feast for his nostrils. Next to the bright lights of Theatreland, leading to Piccadilly Circus. And he gets off the bus at Hyde Park, where there's a big classical music concert where he ends up on stage. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Now, I've written the story. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to James Mayhew, who illustrates Gaspar, Jonathan Sorry. Dove, who set the story to music, and Holly Matheson who is going to be conducting it. Hi, everybody. First of all, uh, well, for me, uh, usually when I work with James, all I have to think about is my words and how they inspire James's pictures. But on this occasion, I've had to write in a way that inspires Jonathan to, to compose his music. So, uh, Jonathan, I know you've, uh, you've worked on similar pieces, pieces like the Crocodiamond. Um, what, what are the challenges of setting a, a, a piece of text to music? Well, uh, there's a lot of balancing and, and juggling to make sure that the narrator can always be heard when he needs to be, um, but that you've got something as colourful as possible going on uh, when the narrator isn't talking. Um, and, and you want it to feel like one piece of music and not hundreds of little pieces of music with, with gaps in. But um, in fact, because Prokofiev in Peter and the Wolf uh, really showed us all how to do it. Um, he did it so brilliantly that, that you think, well, we just do it like that. Uh, so, um, and you made my life certainly much uh, more colourful by coming up with the idea of this of a, of a concert. So um, I knew that at the end of the piece, there were going to be, be lovely little set pieces of, of music. And uh, they were really fun ideas of the pigeons, pizzicato, polka, and yes. cube mice. Because of the way you described them, actually you sort of did the work for me and I just had to write down what you described. <laughs> so that was very easy. Um, <laughs> but having the bus ride through London also is a wonderful opportunity because there's so many things that you see. And, and Gaspard's seen them all for the first time and he's never been on a bus before. So even the idea of sitting in a bus is exciting and different. Um, so that, that was just a really jo a joyful thing to imagine uh, all of these things through a young fox's eyes. And, and, with, and the locations I wanted to choose were ones which were a little bit unusual. So everybody has seen Nelson's Column and Buckingham Palace. So uh, the great thing about that is a real bus journey is that it does pass lots of wonderful, um, exciting places. Now, James, uh, what has been the challenge of this for you? Because you're going to be live illustrating this on stage. I'm going to be narrating it. Holly's going to be conducting it. So because this is going to be a book and it's going to be a concert, what has been the challenge for you? Uh, well, at the moment, the, the challenge is, is the book because I'm illustrating that and just finishing that actually at the moment. And you've set me quite a task by having these scenes set in, in Hyde Park with huge audiences, crowds, an orchestra of 80 people on the stage and I've got to draw all of that so that that's a huge challenge actually um, and I'm trying to find ways and means of, of doing that without driving myself completely bonkers so thank you for that Zeb. Um, <laughs> the challenge for painting on stage is going to be interesting I know that Jonathan's been very generous and he's tried to allow breathing space in his score to give me time to draw something or paint something which is fantastic. I mean, it's it's a, such a luxury to have a piece tailored for that purpose. It's, it's unique, actually. Um, but I think for me, usually when I work with orchestras, 
usually I'm working with, with, with old classical repertoire. Um, I'm painting it in easel and there's a camera on the easel, it's projected onto a screen and I'm painting very fast and quite vigorous with bold bright colours. That's not Gaspar's world, that's not how I do the illustrations and I want to try and illustrate it in a way as close as humanly possible to the feel of the books. So I'm going to be using a, a visualiser and working flat on a table, which I've never done before. It'll be on a smaller scale, closer to the scale of the book illustrations. So that's a challenge awaiting me. Uh, I think it'll be fine, but I don't know yet because we haven't done it. <laughs> We're going to do lots of rehearsal, I know that for sure. We are. <laughs> um, so Holly, um, you're going to have an orchestra on stage, you're going to have James illustrating and me narrating. Um, How's that going to be for you? Well, I suppose I've, I've done a lot of work with uh, dancers and singers and narrators and poets and things. So you do get used to having different antennae out in different directions to make sure everyone's OK. And I really like doing projects like that, actually, because it means you just don't have any time to think about your own concerns or your own worries about how it's going, because you're really concerned for everyone else to make sure they're OK. Um, and I love anything that transforms music for an audience immediately into another art form whether it's dance theater art whatever it might be a light show i think that's it's a really magical way for people to experience music so i think it's um i'm really looking forward to that aspect of it of kind of being a cushion underneath you james rather than just doing my thing alongside you do you know what i mean i, I really want to accompany you rather than you accompany us so I'm, I'm loving that aspect of preparing for it. And of course, the, the classic work to introduce children to orchestral music, symphonic music, is, is Peter and the Wolf. And, and uh, Jonathan has designed this piece of music to, to dovetail perfectly with Peter and the Wolf. But, uh, and in terms of the instruments as well, haven't you, Jonathan? In fact, uh, we've got a symphony orchestra sometimes playing uh, Gaspar's Foxtrot, um, but there's also a smaller arrangement, a chamber arrangement, uh, for when there aren't quite so many uh, instruments available. Um, and in the smaller one, I don't think we've got the three horns that are very distinctively the wolf in, in the Peter and the Wolf. Um, in Gaspar, there's just one bassoon uh, playing um, Gaspar the Fox. And I want to just draw attention to the Gaspar. <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> yeah, I need to get my merchandise sorted then. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much uh, for looking forward to Gaspar's Foxtrot this morning. Sadly, it won't be the world premiere of the Three Choirs Festival this year. Um, you'll be able to see Gaspar's Foxtrot on tour early next year. It will actually be um, uh, being performed in the southeast of the country uh, at the South Bank Centre and then at the Three Choirs Festival next summer. We're thrilled and, uh, and can't wait to share it with you all next year. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.